Hey guys, it's me Jasmine, and today we're gonna be trying some of Blackpink's favorite foods. We got comfort food, we got street food, and some other delicious items as well, so let's get started. Let's start with this potato hot dog. It's a popular Korean street food and is one of Rosé's favorite snacks. Rosé is deemed the foodie of the group and she says that she especially likes it with some sugar sprinkled on top, which is a signature topping for Korean style hot dogs. We're gonna start by making the batter. So in a mixing bowl, we're just gonna add our flour, our baking powder, salt, sugar, and give it a little whisk. Let's make some space here in the middle, a little well. And then we're gonna add our egg and milk and just give it a good mix until we get a smooth batter. Now we're gonna transfer the batter into my tall glass I have over here. And we're gonna throw it in the fridge to chill until we're ready to use it. Now let's prep our potatoes. We're gonna dice them into quarter inch cubes, soak them in cold water for about an hour to remove the excess starch. Then we're gonna bring some water to a boil and blanch the diced potatoes for a few minutes before rinsing it with cold water again. Let's dry them off and transfer them to a bowl. Add a couple tablespoons of flour and toss. Now let's set that to the side and prepare our cheese dogs. I have a couple of hot dogs here. We're gonna cut these in half. Now grab your mozzarella block and cut it to match the size of the other half of your hot dog. Now I'm gonna skewer my hot dogs and my cheese blocks. I'm using these wooden chopsticks that I got from takeout. Now we're just gonna lightly coat them with some flour. We're gonna start by dipping our cheese dogs into the batter we made earlier and then coat it with our diced potatoes, making sure we pack them on nice and tight. Now we're gonna cover it with breadcrumbs. This is going to make it super crispy and crunchy. Now that we have all our hot dogs prepared, we're gonna heat up our oil and place our hot dogs in the pan, fry them for about five to seven minutes or until they're golden brown, top them with some sugar just like Rosé loves, some ketchup, and it's time to dig in. Cheers. Mmm. 10 out of 10 would eat this over a standard corn dog any day. It's like a giant mozzarella stick. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so now we're gonna make Lisa's favorite food, which is Korean pork neck soup. And there are even restaurants that specifically specialize in this soup. So we're first gonna add in our blanched pork bones. To prep these bones, I first soak them in cold water for about two hours and then blanch them for about seven-ish minutes to rid of the impurities. And that way we can get the cleanest pork flavor in this soup. I'm gonna add in some more water to make sure all the bones are covered. And now we're gonna add in one onion, three green onions, just the white parts only, 10 cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of minced ginger, cover it up, and we're gonna let this simmer on medium low for an hour and a half. While the broth is simmering, let's make our seasoning paste. We're gonna combine Korean chili flakes, soybean paste, hot pepper paste, rice wine, fish sauce, perilla seed powder, minced garlic, and black pepper. To make it a little easier to mix, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. The perilla seed powder in this seasoning paste is super important to the dish and gives it this creamy and nutty flavor. Awesome, the broth is ready. Traditionally, the aromatics are removed from the broth, but I don't really want anything going to waste. And also it's just onions and garlic for the most part, which I love. So we're just gonna leave them in there. And now we can take our seasoning paste that we made earlier, add it to the broth. And let's give that a good mix and make sure it is well combined. Now I'm gonna add in the potatoes. And once the potatoes are cooked all the way through, we can add in our Napa cabbage leaves, our bean sprouts. Now I'm gonna add in a few crown daisy leaves. These are part of the daisy family and it has a crunchy texture and a slightly mustardy profile. And finally, we're gonna add in some perilla leaves. This is what a perilla leaf looks like. It belongs to the mint family. I find that perilla leaves can be a bit strong for me, so I'm just gonna go with a few leaves. By itself, the perilla leaf has a bit of a licorice-y flavor profile, but in the soup, it will certainly enhance the flavor. Just gonna give this a good mix, and we're all set. Kamjatang. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> Instantly warmed my soul. It's so rich and creamy. It's so tender. What are mm. you doing? So good. Okay, okay. There's enough for two of us, you know. No. So in order to make Jenny's dish, we need to make Jisoo's dish, which is rice. And so to get that signature sticky Korean rice, you're gonna wanna use short grain rice and not 
long grain rice. Though you will find that all households have their own preference, I came from a short grain rice household and my boyfriend came from a long grain rice household and so now we have both in the house. Rice is a huge staple in Korean cuisine and it's honestly the center of most Korean meals. It just goes with everything which is the exact reason why it's Jisoo's favorite food. So when making the rice, obviously you can follow the package instructions but there is the finger trick which I'll get to in a second. So let's measure out our rice. One cup should be enough for two to three people and we're just gonna rinse it in water until it becomes clear. This rice water, you can use this water to wash your skin, your hair, water your plants with it. It's good stuff. Rice cookers will also often come with guides on the side, but they're not always accurate. So the finger trick comes in handy. So let me teach you the finger trick if you haven't heard of it before. You just wanna level out your rice. And so to get the perfect rice, you'll want to add water until it hits your first knuckle. Finally, we're just gonna grab our rice, put it into our rice cooker and hit start. She's ready. I'm not gonna lie, I can count on my fingers how many times I've used a pot to cook rice. Like legit, we really do love rice cookers. We'll bring them camping. I could eat like three bowls of plain rice, honestly. All right, so Jenny's favorite dish is an original recipe. We're gonna use the same rice from Jisoo's. I'm just gonna reshape it a little bit. I'm gonna start with the egg yolk, so I'm gonna make a little well in the center right here. Just drop that yolk in, add the pollock roe. Then we're gonna sprinkle on some green onions some sesame oil, and we're just gonna mix it all up. Gonna make an avocado rose here. I'm gonna peel the avocado. Peel it carefully because sometimes if you peel it in the wrong angle, it'll lift off the uh, avocado flesh. And slice it very thinly, fan it all out, and then roll it up until it's a pretty rose. And voila! It does smell really good, I can't lie. Let's give it a try. Cheers! Mmm! That's surprisingly really good. Mmm! Even though the pollock row is on the saltier side, the avocado really helps balance it out. Yeah, I would say this is a perfectly balanced dish. Okay, I don't know which one's my favorite because the hot dogs are really good and they were so crunchy on the outside and the sugar topping was like to die for. And then the pork bone soup was also so hearty. Yeah, the pork was like melt in your mouth. But this one's really special. I feel like there's a lot of things happening, but also it's very balanced. And that umami flavor in this dish is like, ugh, I could eat it every day. I can't pick. They're too different. You can't compare them. I would pick, I would pick this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can't pick a favorite. They were all really good. So you guys should definitely try them. And if you guys end up making any of these dishes, make sure to snap a picture and tag me on Instagram so I can see. Bye. Oh, yes.